Hello ladies and gentlemen, coaching is one of the most powerful performance development tools available for leaders because it gives the coachee power and control over their own creativity, decision-making processes and the outcome of whatever they choose to do. The first question is, what is coaching? Well, maybe it's easier to say what it isn't. When you're involved in developing people, there are several roles that you need to be aware of. The first is the teacher. The teacher has the knowledge. The students, they don't know anything. Your, your job is to pass your knowledge to them. The trainer has some knowledge, the participants have some knowledge, and you provide a platform for people to share what they know for everybody's benefit. As the coach, you don't need to be an expert in the topic. The coachee is the expert. Your job is to help them improve their performance. The last role is as the mentor. The mentor is an interesting role because basically it includes all of these roles and the mentor has access to power. The mentor can open doors that would stay closed for the mentee. The coach does not need to be an expert in the subject. The coachee is the expert. The coach provides the process for the coachee to develop their own ideas. And the coach does this by asking lots and lots of questions and only asking questions. Sometimes it's uh, much, much easier to give your experience and simply tell the person what to do. However, that creates a cycle of dependency. Oh, um, hi Tom. Hi, can you tell me how this works? Um, click that. And what should I do here? Mm. Click there. And how about this one over here? Uh, click. Click over there, yes. and, and how about, how about Click one? here, yeah. And <laughs> the whole point about coaching is you get the coachee to stop using your brain and start using their own. Me? That's right. So, rule number one, the coach only asks questions. There are many different coaching models. Today, I'm going to introduce one of the best known, an industry standard, called the GROW Coaching Model. It was first introduced in a book called Coaching for Performance by Alexander Graham and Sir John Whitmore. It's an excellent book, very, very easy to read and apply, and it's translated in over 20 different languages. So, let's have a look at the GROW Model. The beauty of the GROW Model is it's really simple. You just need to walk through these four quadrants asking open questions. First, ask about the person's goals, then the present situation. Go creative and brainstorm what options they have to get to the goal. And finally, which of these options will they do? That's the action plan. A typical coaching session can last from one minute to several hours. So let's go into detail of each phase. You start with the goal. What does the person want to achieve? And you do this because you need to know where you're going. If you don't know where you're going, well, you'll probably end up getting lost. And, uh, you know, and if you get lost, you'll end up somewhere else. Imagine a timeline. The coach's job is to move the coachee along their own individual timeline according to their needs. Now, it depends on the topic you're coaching on, how big it is, which areas of the timeline you choose to focus on. In simple, short, very direct coaching, then the goal is what you need to actually focus on. And when you're doing that, you ask lots and lots of questions to help the coachee develop SMART goals. Now, you need to be careful about SMART goals because being too specific too early in a change process can be a limiting factor. The coaching needs to learn and experience before they can be SMART. 
Sometimes it's better to stay fuzzy. If you're coaching a very big and complex change, it can be really fascinating to help the coachee develop their vision. Now, the problem with the future is it's not real, it's abstract. So your role as coach is to help the people make it real. Get in there and time travel with them. And you time travel by using good open questions. Your goal is to make this future really, really attractive so they want to be there. Now, the reason you do this is that any effective personal change or business change is always created by two forces. One is a very strong, um, real, attractive future. And the other one is a very, very real and urgent reason to leave the past. Now it's time to start digging into the reality. What's happening now? What caused the present situation? Now, the skill of the coach is to uncover if the coachee really understands the present situation or not. If they do understand the present situation, then move on quickly to the next step of the GROW model. However, if you feel that they don't understand the present situation, or if they've got blind spots, then dig deep. Start asking lots and lots of open questions to challenge them and to expand their understanding of the present situation and what caused it. I've noticed coaches making a lot of common mistakes. One of them is not spending enough time in the future. The future stays dull, boring, analytical. Yes, it's not attractive, pulling the person in this direction. The other thing is that coaches spend a lot of time in the history of the problem. The history can be important. You can learn from history. Sometimes you find the reason, the cause, the barriers and blocks to change. But very often the history is not that important because you can't change it. There's no use crying over spilt milk, so move on. The other reason coaches spend a lot of time in this space is because of how can I possibly help the person if I don't fully understand the issue myself? Coaches, your job is owning the process and helping them understand the content. If you're in this situation asking questions because of your own insecurity, then it's time to move on. Options. It's brainstorming time. Ow! Now it's time to start using your open questions to help the coachee generate as many ideas as possible to move from the present situation and into the future. The more ideas they generate, the more options they have, the more choice they have, and the more likely they are to find the best, most effective way of moving forward. The easiest way to do this is simply to ask the question, what could you do? And what else? And what else? What else? Well, what else? And what else? And what else? While brainstorming, it's extremely important to separate this exciting idea generating phase of coaching from evaluating if the ideas are realistic and relevant. Brainstorming and evaluation are very, very different ways of thinking, so keep them separate. Mixing them generally makes both very, very weak. Once the coachee is coming up with a whole list of really creative and interesting ideas, it's time to move to the will do. Here you start evaluating these ideas, how realistic they are, relevant, how good they are and you choose the ones you're actually going to do. You create an action plan. At this point, you may want to ask the coachee what could prevent them being successful, um, what they're gonna learn out of doing these things, and if they're ready, get smart. So now some coaching tips and tricks. While coaching, it's easier and more natural 
to jump between the quadrants in a conversation with the person. Of course, asking questions. And that's especially true of the goal and the reality. Shifting back and forth between them is, is quite natural. So feel free to do that as long as the coaching session is effective and as long as you're asking questions. Remember, open questions are more powerful than closed questions because they open up the subject and allow the person to talk in whichever direction they want. For example, you could ask, do you have any other ideas? Which invites the coachee to say, no. Much better would be, what other ideas do you have? Which encourages the coachee to carry on brainstorming. Summarize often. Summarizing focuses the coachee's attention and gives the conversation structure. And above all, have fun. If you're having fun, then you're probably running a great coaching session. The final question to ask is, who should you coach? Well, there are three main guidelines there. The first one is, the coachee should want to be coached. They may come to you or you may offer coaching to them, but in the end they need to be willing to go through this process. The second important thing is the coachee needs enough knowledge to find their own journey through the problem solving. If they don't have enough knowledge, then they need to be mature enough and motivated enough to run their own learning journey. If they don't have the knowledge or the maturity and, and motivation, then maybe you as the coach need to step out of the coaching role and become a trainer or teacher. The third important thing to take account of is, does the coach have enough skill to work with the situation? Remember, this is business coaching. You are not a psychologist. If you detect that the person has very, very deep personal problems, then ensure they get professional help. So that's the GROW coaching model. Really, really simple. Ask lots of open questions. First of all, about the goal. What does the person want to achieve? Then about the present situation. Where are they now? After you've done that, run the brainstorming session. How can they get from the reality to the goal? When you've got lots and lots of ideas, go to will do and choose which ideas are most realistic and relevant and create an action plan. Pretty simple. So that's the Grow Coaching model. Oh, um, hello Tom, how are you? Hi, hello. yeah, great. Could you just show me how this works, please? That looks interesting. What are you trying to achieve? Oh, I'm trying to clone myself. What, clone yourself? Yeah, yeah, here on the screen. Okay, mm -hmm. well, that's pretty good. What do you know about cloning yourself at the moment? Oh, not a lot. Pretty much nothing. Okay, and what more do you have to learn so that you can actually start cloning yourself mm, Green screen and masking are important, I think. Mm. Okay, interesting. And where could you find that out? I want to ask you. I thought you'd be great. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, but where could you find that out without asking me? Hmm, well, I could do video tutorials, community groups, um, paid training, just experiment. Okay, that's, that's quite a long list. Um, which one are you going to do first? Hmm, I guess the YouTube tutorials are the simplest place to start. Okay, great. Hey, listen, when you've gone, when you've gone through that blog and you've learned about it and you think you know what you have to do, come back and tell me. I'd be really excited to um, hear what you learned and then help you take the next step. Okay, bye. Excellent, good, I will. Look forward to it. Bye.